Blake was high energy, very athletic, very smart, had lots of friends, just really a great kid. Blake, when he was younger, he was very athletic. He was handsome. He had a lot of friends. His friends meant the world to him. He was just the popular kid, and he he loved to, he was just a loud kid, and he was always so energetic. He was a very athletic kid also. He played soccer and baseball growing up. And he loved to give people a hard time, but at the same time, he, you could tell he cared about them a lot. He did like to get a laugh out of people with his jokes. That's why it, was, it would kind of catch you off guard when Blake would tell jokes because he wasn't really like an emotional kind of guy. So they would always be like really funny. I think that when he got into middle school, he started developing, you know, a, a large friend group. And so I think there was just a lot of pressure for him to try to impress and try to be the most popular kid. Deep down, he seemed very depressed um, and just bored. And when he was in high school, he um, had a girlfriend well, junior high and high school, and when they broke up, he was just very devastated. Um, I couldn't, you know, it was hard to get him to go to school. Um, he would just cry, um, and I believe that's when he started uh, experimenting with marijuana. I think he started out with marijuana and uh, maybe some drinking, you know, uh, when he was a freshman in, in high school. And so he tried the marijuana, obviously liked it, and got to where he was smoking it every day. And I, I think that's when we started seeing the biggest change in him where he started making really poor decisions. We found out because he had failed a drug test that he had to take um, to play football. And, uh, you know, we had a conversation with him about the marijuana, and he said that it just made him feel normal. Like anybody else, we just loved our kids so much, and we want to believe the best in them. And, the, you know, in some ways, he would always tell us that, you know, it was this teacher's fault or this coach's fault. And, and so sometimes we found ourselves buying into that. And, and um, you know, Blake was, you know, our kid. And we, you know, went to bat for him and, and would, you know, kind of believe it was what he was doing was a phase. He had a group of, you know, 20 boys that he was friends with, very popular and he started losing his friends, hanging out with a different crowd. And, you know, eventually he was trying, you know, pills. Um, he would always say, you know, I'm not trying anything heavy, um, any of the hard drugs, but I always told him, you know, Blake, the Xanax that you're taking, that can kill you just as much as, you know, the hard stuff. And, um, you know, he would always tell me not to worry, um, which, you know, his dad and I, we were constantly worried about him. If we, if I were to look back on it now, I would say there was just red lights going off like crazy that we just did not pay attention to um, like we should have. And, um, you know, I don't want to say it's our fault, but at the same time, it's hard to, hard to sometimes get past that thought that I should have paid a lot closer closer attention to some of the things that were going on, and uh, I just didn't. And like I said, I thought it was just part of a kid being in high school, and that's just the way it was. His senior year, we finally talked him into going to his first rehab. Um, he was there for 30 days, and then we brought him home. Um, it was really hard on us because he, you know, liked being close to the family. Uh, we liked having him home. 
So we let him come home, and obviously it was probably too soon. We should have kept him there. Um, and when he got back, he was maybe better for a few weeks, and then he was right back using again. So I was going to bed at about 9 o'clock on the 23rd, and he was out, um, you know, seeing his friends that he hadn't seen in a week since we were out. And we didn't typically let him drive at night, so I was texting him, telling him, hey, you need to bring your car home. And he said that he had to drop his friend off down at uh, UT Dallas and was just going to drive down there, drop him off, and that he'd be right back. And um, I said, okay. And... You know, and, and it part of, you know, again, me being just wanting to go to bed, I should have probably told him to come on home, but um, I said, okay. And he came in and gave me his keys. I don't even know, maybe 930. And um, I went to sleep and got up at four o'clock in the morning, which is normal for me, and walked out into the living room and the TV was on. Um, but his video game was was on, so he had been playing his PlayStation, and the video game was still on, and went to change the TV over to something for me to watch, and kind of did a double take and looked over there, and his his um, controller was just sitting on his chest, and I just said, Blake, Blake, you know, wake up, and he wouldn't move, and. Um, that's when I knew there was a problem because he had suffered an overdose. Um, that was in January of the same year. And so I just kind of knew something was wrong and called 911. Um, they walked me through um, doing CPR. And so I was trying to give them CPR and the police came and then the EMTs came and they worked on them for, I don't even know how long, an hour maybe, 30 minutes, and finally came and said, you know, there's really nothing else we can do. And so, um, you know, that was, that's kind of what happened. Then my wife was at her parents' house, which is out of, in Longview, um, so it's you know, two hours from, from where we were, and I had to um, call her and break it to her that, you know, Blake was dead, and that was brutal. I was so shocked. I didn't know what to do. I asked Andy. I stood there on the phone, and it just didn't even register, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, what do I need to do? And he said, you need to come home. So when I woke up to my mom and my dad sitting at the end of my bed, just pouring in tears, it, I knew something was up. And they told me the news. They were able to go back into his social media post or text and or combination thereof to try to find out who it was that supplied that for him. And, and um, they actually, here we are over a year later, they were able to indict this person just uh, last week and should be arresting them, uh, hopefully this week. It did, you know, take a little over a year for this to happen. Um, you know, we've, it's been hard waiting, you know, for this guy to be arrested. I feel like it depends on where you, what area you live in. Um, you know, sometimes they seem like they care and then other times they don't. They just, you know, think, oh, well, this is just a, a you a know, junkie. a junkie, a drug user. They, sh they had no business using. There's actually two different charges they're charging them with and could be anywhere from 
I think zero years in prison to 20 years in prison. Um, so we'll we'll see. But it's it's actually somebody that he met in uh, one of the treatment centers that he was in. Parents need to know that it can happen to anybody. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, it could be their first time trying a pill of some kind. They don't have to be a regular user. It can happen to any anybody, anytime. Um, you know, they could their child could just be curious and now they're putting it in, you know, even marijuana. Just know that like one little dose of something can just ruin many people's lives.